Hello, welcome back. I'm Ilarion and this is JavaScript slash TypeScript web automation course. Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about locators or selectors. Let's move on. So I would like to do a quick follow up on the previous video. So I haven't mentioned this, but the less dependencies you have in your package JSON, the better. So always think about it like when you want to add some dependency, that is not a good practice. If you can achieve this using pure JavaScript or pure Node.js, then go ahead and do this. If you are installing some third-party library, you kind of make your project, make your tests more complicated. And uh, in the long term, you will suffer from this if you have a lot of dependencies because first you have to update dependencies all the time. These dependencies will have some breaking changes. All dependencies will be abandoned. So no, nobody would maintain them. And then that's it. You, you would just have to replace that code uh, that uses that dependency. So I'm always telling you this, the less dependencies, the better. Use pure JavaScript, pure Node.js, write some functions yourself. Uh, find some code on the internet. Uh, just don't let your package JSON dependencies blow. Yeah, I'm telling you this from experience because I, I was the one who was always like installing some uh, new library for everything that I needed. But yeah, J just don't repeat my mistakes. And the less dependencies, the better. Just remember this. All right. And one more thing we haven't talked about on the previous video is how to actually update dependencies. So let's quickly do this live. Remember, we had this package JSON with dev dependencies, and here we have Playwright test. So this is the version of Playwright test. And this tilde means that uh, it can install any minor version here. So. All right, now let's go to the NPM registry. NPM playwright test. All right, and now here, let's see the latest stable version. Okay, so the latest stable version is this, 1.40.1. Okay, and we have this one. So if we just do, let's open the terminal. If we just do npm update playwright test like this, it says that everything is up to date. It hasn't updated anything because uh, if you remember, it first went to the package log JSON. In package log JSON, uh, it found that the installed version in, is this one. It matches the version in package JSON, so it doesn't install anything else. All right, and what if we want to force it to update to the latest version? So the possibilities we have are the following. First, we can do, let's say, npm install uh, playwright test, and here say um, the exact version, 140.0. Okay, let's do this. All right, changed three packages. Let's see what we have in package JSON. Here the version is updated. And in package log JSON, we have that this version is installed. So we are telling um, NPM like install this exact version, 140.0. And what if we want to install like the latest version? In our case, it's 1.40.1. If you want to install the latest version, here we can just do latest. All right, and that worked. So if you do this with the latest, then it installs the latest version. And here we have it in package JSON, lock, and yeah, also in package JSON. Okay, so we updated the version of Playwright. All right. Then I also wanted to show you 
one more thing. Sometimes you might face this error when you're trying to run tests. So what it says, executable doesn't exist at blah, 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 caches. So Chromium doesn't exist at this path. So browser, browser doesn't exist. And here Playwright says, looks like Playwright test or Playwright was just installed or updated. Please run the following command to download new browsers. Okay, let's try to reproduce this. Let me go. Yeah, let me actually run some test. npm run test. What scripts do we have? Yeah, just npm run test. All right. Yeah, here is the error that says that um, it, it can't find the Chromium browser. Okay, so what do we do in this case? We just do what Playwright suggests us. npx Playwright install. And this uh, will install the necessary browsers for us. npx Playwright install. Yep, download in Chromium. Perfect. That's what we need. All right, while it's downloading, I'll move to the next one. And yeah, the agenda for today's video, locators. Locators, selectors, these are pretty much like synonyms. Okay, this is really important topic, one of the most important ones. Then next time we'll talk about actions, assertions, a, a triple A or as I call it AAA pattern triple A. All right, so what do we have here? Okay, installed everything. Now let's try to run the test. Okay, running tests, blah, 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 Chromium, etc. Yeah, actually we don't care how this finishes. I'm just gonna kill this one. Yeah, it's just passed, all right. So it found the browsers and everything's fine there. All right, we reduced the course content and what we're gonna talk about today. And yeah, jumping right into it with the tip of the day. Let's open the docs. All right. And what the docs say. So this function poses script execution. So in simple words, uh, which we will just see this in action, but just you're running, running the test. And then at some point you just want the test to pause. Let's say you want to debug something. You want to see something uh, in Chrome DevTools. You want to inspect some element, check what's the state of that element. So whatever the reason is, you can pause the test execution and then resume it. Okay, let's add this to our test. Let's edit, let's say here, example spec, example spec. Mm, or this create order. Yeah, let's do it in create order. So it goes here and then let's say we want to debug this test. Page, pause. Okay, done. And now let's actually run this test. So it will pause after clicking on Gavin the Tiger. Okay. Create order spec UI. Opens <laughs> on another screen. All right. And let's check. Okay, it didn't pause the test execution. Let me stop this. And you know why? Because we have to read the documentation carefully. Let's see what it says. This method requires playwright to be started in headed mode with a false, false headless value in the browser. All right, I think we can do it this way. Let me stop execution. And now I will do it with the flag super flag debug let's see what happens okay again another screen and now i'm running this test again okay so what just happened Oof, too many windows 
what just happened it paused the post the test execution you see here so after it reached this point then it paused the test execution and what i can do, I can do now i can click continue resume so it will continue the text test execution from here but at this point i can you see i have this page i can open chrome dev tools for this page i see all the logs everything i need here i can click on locator and just double check something here before the test continues yeah so this is a very useful feature now let's press resume okay it continues the test execution yeah that's it let me fail this one yeah i just paused it here also but yeah to do it from the code you can use this command all right so closing this and let's move to the topic of this current lecture <laughs> all right boom i'll remove this pause from here for now so all right again one more tip of the day guys i should show you this one too yeah i just love this one because uh, i haven't seen anything similar in other um, frameworks like selenium selenium doesn't have such capability so let's browser developer tools pv debug console Mm -hmm. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this test okay let's actually have the pause here we're gonna run this test pv debug console and then npx playwright test what's the test name you remember create test so create order spec and now let's run it in ui mode okay it opens this window it stops the test where we wanted it to stop so at this point so and now we have this page where the test is executed let me open chrome devtools on this page and what do we see here we can access playwright object and here we can do whatever we want let's say we want to test some locator from here so let's say i want to get by roll link yeah so i can take anything from here add to cart add to cart don't paste code into the tools that you don't understand i understand this code come on <laughs> oh really <laughs> is this serious yeah i think i have to enable this somewhere in playwright configs to be able to pass paste some code here but all right it's probably some safe mode then let's type it get by role button and name is yeah i'll just do it once so add to cart then closing this and what do i do i do the click right click or let's try to find this element okay so it actually found this element here so this is the element we're gonna click on this is this button add to cart and what i can do here i can do the click right can i yeah looks like i, I cannot do actions so i can only get locators from here but this is again this is really powerful feature so whatever you write here and you see that it kind of doesn't work you can go to the devtools console playwright 
and you can execute these methods here generate locator get by label by role by text etc so everything related this uh, video if you still remember is uh, about locators so th this is one of the ways how we can get these locators how we can actually test them so we don't have to always go here change something in the code so go to vs code change some string here add card to 22 okay and then run the test again see if that works or doesn't work and if it's somewhere at the end of the test we would always have to wait and in order to just fix the locator you just run it in ui mode you add this in the beginning of the command this environment variable debug console and then you will have a playwright object in your dev tools so this way again reminding you this way you can easily test playwright locators you test them here and then you can copy them to your code all right so playwright finally get into the locators i'm always following the official docs so if something changes then yeah just go to the docs my videos can get outdated I know that, so I always suggest you just go to the docs. All right, so here Playwright suggests us some basic locators like get by role, by text, label, placeholder, uh, alt text, title, test ID. Okay, so these are the basic locators that Playwright suggests us to use. So let's see what we have. First is get by role. This is, I think, most popular locator that playwright generates for us yeah get by role by role by label by role again okay and what this by role means get by role by label yeah let's get to this one I'll open this get by role so get by role it kind of finds elements by by their area role area attributes and accessible names what are these let's open the v3 the real small okay th there is a lot to read here but basically let me show you what most of these mean let's open chrome dev tools and here in elements we should have something like accessibility yeah accessibility and now here we have some area attributes you see playwright doesn't have any area attributes but it has some accessibility like every website has some accessibility how you call them accessibility locators for people with limited abilities so everything what we see on the page it has kind of some accessibility label so this is navigation main so playwright would uh, select this element by role role navigation main name main then this link is playwright logo playwright so uh, playwright would select this as uh, get by role link and then playwright logo playwright okay like these docs again so th this is choosing elements by role okay just wanted to show you this example that is actually under accessibility tab here in devtools okay so this is the first one get by role and what do we have get by role button this is what i just show you in accessibility right A button navigation etc and name sign in okay what else do we have here locate by role yeah so this is locating by role same thing get by role heading get by role checkbox get by role button so everything what we just seen here in accessibility all right and actually you can find all, all the list of all possible 
roles somewhere over here but mostly playwright generates these locators for you so maybe you shouldn't care much okay then locate by label what is label label is just some uh, kind of wrapper element um, over inputs so it looks like this so this is password password label is this one password you see the element is label and it has text password and inside it has this input yeah so this is how we can locate elements by label uh, get by label password then locate by placeholder placeholder is similar to label but placeholder is something what's inside of the input you see here name example.com so this placeholder is specified here in input like an attribute so we can do the same with css with xpath easy it's just playwright gives us some uh, more like human readable format for these uh, uh, locators get by placeholder everything's clear here all right locate by text this is easy i already shown you how to do this with xpath on i think on the first or second video of this course then yeah and playwright has this useful thing like page get by text get by text john yeah and one more thing it has uh, is regular expressions so some patterns get by text and here you can specify some regular expression if you don't know what regular expressions are just go to javascript info and here regexp regexp and stream yeah here you can find some easy examples for regexp okay so regex part is just basically matching by some pattern so here uh, let's review this example so here it matches by first um, the text should have welcome string then comma then space and then it should end this means this symbol means end. this should end the string with any number of characters from a to z so in our case uh, john would match this criteria if we would have a string something like john one two three this wouldn't match this criteria here a z capital a z lowercase and this uh, parameter means that um, it kind of ignores case so uh, it doesn't matter in which case our text is written welcome like um in with the capital first letter w or welcome in lowercase all small letters doesn't matter this one says ignore case Where, whatever matches this one um, it works all right moving on locate by alt text okay this is for images alternative text so let's say you have some image and you cannot uh, like browser cannot uh, download this image so browser cannot find this image on the web in this case browser would display playwright logo like this alt playwright playwright logo let's actually let's larion let's test this about me okay i have this image of myself let me locate this okay it's here i'll zoom in for you okay so this image has src so from where it should be loaded and what if i delete this yeah so you see it's not able to find the image here at this path at this source so it displays the alternative text Ilarion Halushka yeah I can say here Ilarion Halushka logo boom so this is the the alternative text for the images when they cannot be loaded on the page 
and for this we have uh, playwright locator get by alt text playwright logo yep and we see the same here alt play playwright logo locate by title same thing title just some attribute of span element of or other n elements on the html web page just by by title it's same thing as with css or xpath selectors they just like playwright team um, kind of gives us more human readable format of these locators that's it that's it Th they say use the same logic everything is the same as css or xpath selectors they navigate uh, through the dom tree they find elements uh, in dom tree if you remember like children descendants like going up the tree down the tree yeah everything is the same Okay, locate by test ID. We already did this, did this with CSS or XPath. So let's say our element has some attribute data slash test ID equals direct directions. And then we can search by get by test ID. So obvious, right? Okay, let me speed up a little bit. Custom test ID attribute, you might not need this because sometimes like you're using not this data test ID attributes, but front end code, your developers are using some other attribute, not this default one. And for this, you might uh, have to go to playwrightconfig.ts and just uh, specify their use test ID attribute data playwright or whatever attribute you have, like data uh, ID or test ID or whatever whatever you have in your test instead of this one in your uh, like production code in your website code you can uh, override it uh, here in config all right locate by css and xpath this one is obvious just page dot locator and specify your css selector or xpath selector so everything what we did on previous lectures and playwright also supports like locating the elements by css or X xpath selectors by default without specifying which selector this is so playwright will just kind of check uh, what's the format of this selector and give you uh, like it will distinguish between css and uh, xpath all right here uh, playwright says that these locators are not great i already told you this on one of the previous videos that specifying some locators which look like this is not a great idea it's better to find some small kind of locator for some specific element on the page or even better some data test id or some id wherever just don't build uh, default locators from Chrome DevTools, which look like this. Okay, locate in Shadow DOM. This one probably you won't need it. And if you do need it, then just go to the uh, documentation and find how to locate uh, elements in Shadow DOM. If you don't know what Shadow DOM is, I think you, you don't know to know about it until you uh, face it on some web page actually no no it no I'm, I'm not gonna show you like uh, if you're interested then go ahead and read this custom uh, kind of elements on the page with shadow root all right now let's move to filtering locators what do we have here in the docs so page get by role list item filter get by role button so what this means first we are locating get by role list item which is this element list item so first it finds this and this element okay one two then we do filter has text product two okay we did the filtering has text product two okay so this is our element 
and then we say get by role button name add to cart and then it locates this one so we are kind of slowly moving uh, down so first we found these two elements get by role list item then we say filter has text product to so it filters out like it doesn't look at this one doesn't return this one it looks at this one and then get by role button when it found this element get by role button inside of it just add to cart uh, it might remind you of finding the elements by css or xpass um like finding the children right you remember I, I was showing you like how to find the children how to find the children and how to find descendants uh, if you forgot about it then yeah I, i'm sorry probably you need to write some notes uh, after each video and yeah then review the notes uh, because if you just watch the video and you don't repeat after me and you don't write the notes then yeah it might be useless to watch the video sorry okay yeah again th this is this filtering is basically similar to finding the children and finding the descendants here it can also filter by regexp regular expression so just some pattern a filter by not ha having text okay it also has this function like this parameter has not text this one has text filter this one has not text out of stock all right actually maybe let's try to find one of these let's try to use one of these on the website let me go to the code and blog navigation. Okay, we have some elements. Yeah, I'll just use it here. So let's say I want to find some element on my blog, which is somewhere over here. Inspect main contact content okay so section id main content mm -hmm. then i give best articles for yeah let's find let's try to find this element list of articles list of articles okay so first i want to locate this section main content I'm going to locate this one. Get by test ID test. Yeah, whatever. I'll just use page locator and then specify here main content. This is CSS selector. So I found this element and then I want to filter this element and then, 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 then post list of articles post list no actually I, let me check this one I want to find this one so class posts list class posts list okay I found all these and now I want to filter the one has text HR, let's say this one. How I failed Amazon. I don't need regex for this. Okay. And now inside of this element, yeah, actually, I don't have anything else inside of that. This is just a button. It will return the button and I can click on this one. All right. And let's pause the test after executing this command. Boom. Debug to make sure the pause works. Okay, don't need that one. Boom. Opens everything here. <laughs> cool. 
okay so let me test uh, start the test give him the tiger oh i ran the wrong test <laughs> that's fine block debug come on and here yep one two okay then run in this one boom got here filter ask text has text okay i think it should have clicked on this one oh it found this element so i have to yeah so i see now i have to do the following locator filter has text so it actually found this um, list of articles this one because i also have this list of articles which matches this locator so this locator would return this list and then this list right and i filtered this by has text how i failed at amazon blah 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 so it filtered out only this element all this component and now inside of this component let's say i actually want to click on this element so for that let me do the following yeah i sure sure i could use like get locator of some element here just click click on some element where is that do do the recording wherever pick the locator yeah but that's not the point i want to show you how to do this like in the code let's do it the hard way okay filter and now when i got this the right list of the posts now i can do the locator again and now i want to find a link which filter has text yep that should work so first it finds this component and then filter has text yeah and then it finds the exact link with this text okay let's rerun this let's rerun this boom okay starting the test okay it clicked on where we expected it yeah so that was it that was filtering so you see first i located the posts list because again i'm reminding you let's go again so i have here posts list one posts list two so one two i have two elements with the same locator with the same class one and two so i want to select this one this one here and this one has this text inside of it so in the code it looks like this first i locate all the posts list elements like this con containers with the posts then i filter the one which has this text which is the one here right because it has this text not the one over here and then what i do i again chain it like locator a locator a it finds all the links all the links one two three like all the links here in this component and then i am telling it filter the one that has text how i failed amazon interview so it actually finds inside of here this element and then it clicks it that's it. it it clicked and we navigated to this page all right 
So that was example of using the filter. Just wanted to show you filter by not having text. Okay, this is also possible. Then filter by child descendant. Filter has page get by role heading name product two. Okay, so this is we can kind of uh, <laughs> selector inside of selector. We can specify selector inside of selector. Mm, okay, yeah, th this would be similar to doing the following has and then page locator um, or page has what is that get element by text yeah get element by text so has element by text yeah this would do the same job okay one two resuming the test well yeah did the same job so i can either put some text here like has text to filter the things out or i can put some locator here like this one get by text uh, if it seems confusing to you then you just have to go and play with these filters just select some elements filter them by text by like uh, children um, which have some text like i did here you just have to play with this thing if it seems confusing to you has not okay so now again we can change this to has not has not page get by text so filter the ones that don't have element with this text in our case we would have to do the following Filter the one which doesn't have this text. Boom. I'm replacing and this will do the same. So has not text, it means again, it will find first, look, first line. It finds one and two. Then it filters has not get by text and this text and this one has this text and this one below doesn't have this text so it kind of filters to this one to this component then locator a it finds all the links all the links here and then filters by uh, the links by the one that has this text so this is this one and then does the click I'm sure for some people it might be pretty obvious, but yeah, for beginners it might not. So that's why I'm showing this in details here. Locator operators, great. A filter has tags, we've already seen that to have count. Okay, that's for another lecture. What is this? Uh, matching inside a locator. Matching inside a locator, filter has text. Yeah, we just did this, didn't we? yeah has text okay button name up to cart yeah actually we just did this so don't see anything new okay matching two locators sim simultaneously or two alternative locators if you ever used chai library for example for writing postman tests then you might be familiar with such operators as and or or and here we can do locator filter how it looks uh, get by role and get by title okay let's find some element here get by role and get by title for us it might be I don't know, let's find something here in the footer. Get by role. Mm. <laughs> get by role. And get by title. Yeah, let's say I want to find it by this text. 
we want to find this element await page get by text Learn Halushka and and here I'm specifying one more selector get by text and locator just some CSS what do I have here a come on a link okay and what I want to do with this one click do I'll do the click okay removing this filter okay uh, get by text this text and page locator and this should be a link because get by text might have more occurrences on the page I might have let's see here yeah Ilarion Halushka here I have this link let me check yeah but th this is spun this is not a link so first what this locator does first it uh, finds elements by this text which is this one, Ilarion Halushka, and then this one. So it finds two elements, and then we are specifying end page locator A. And it should be a link. This one is not a link, so it's a spawn inside of a link. And this one is actually a link. Let's try to run it. Why am I always restarting this? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't care. Okay, you saw that? It clicked on that element. Locator here. Yeah, it selects this one. Boom, great. So it found two elements with this text and then, and then clicked on the one which is a link yeah great and we also have or uh, get by text mm, what can it be get by text get by text so let's go to this page get by text back to the list of articles hmm yeah all right let's find this element get back to the list of articles back to the list of articles and let's do it like this so here we had add and so it clicked on that one and here we'll have the following or so one of these one of these selectors either get by text list of articles or Let's see what else we have here. We have class back to articles button. Come on. <laughs> back to articles button. Locator. This is a class. So with the dot in the beginning. Yep. So first it finds get by text. It finds that element. If it doesn't find it, then it will go and uh, search for this locator or this one. Actually, we can do it even like this or something else I don't know mm. yeah but it will find this locator and it will not uh, go to this one so it will return right after it finds the element with this text actually let's test this let me run this in UI mode Okay, and now and now 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 what happened? Okay, it clicked on this one and then yeah it clicked on this element, it found it by text. Okay, it found it by text. And what if it doesn't find this element by text? Let's say I remove this I just remove this and let me rerun the test
Okay, and what do we see here? Yeah, again, it found this element and it clicked on it. It found it and it clicked on it. Because what? Because we have this or condition. So it didn't find this element, so it found this element by class. All right, let's go to documentation. Yeah, I know it's kind of, I don't know, I feel bored like with reviewing documentation, but I think it will be more fun for you. Just, okay, Ilarion shows some examples and I will repeat something, play with something, and that's it. Matching only visible elements. Visible true. Okay, display none. Consider a page with two buttons. The first invisible and the second visible. Okay. Uh, second button because it's visible and then click it. Find the second button because it's visible. And then click it. Yeah, so this is a case when you have two buttons on the page. One is not visible, style display none. We already did, did this on one of the first videos. So this one is hidden. And this one is visible on the page. So two buttons. One is hidden, so it's inside of HTML, but user doesn't see it on UI. And this one is visible. And playwright would throw an error here. Playwright would throw an error here because like play Playwright has some strictness violation, uh, some strictness error uh, rules when it uh, comes to locator selection on the page. So let's say you have two elements with the same, show me by example. I have two, two elements with the same class. Actually not two, I have any more. So I have these posts list one and posts list two one two now I'm, I'm editing my uh, let me select so get locator and I'll just use CSS class okay and now I want to click on posts list. So on one of these, either on, yeah, on the list. Yeah, no, let's say then I want to select okay, the posts list. And then I want to select <laughs> okay, the yeah, just some some link under that. Okay, let's run this one. Okay, it failed. Why it failed? Let's see in errors. Strict mode violation. Locator resolved to 34 elements. So this thing actually found 34 elements, 34. And Playwright says, I don't know on which one to click. So this is the strictness violation. I don't know on which one to click. Please tell me either first, would this one work? Let's test. Saving, rerunning again. First, first doesn't work. First, what's the right dev docs and th. NTH first locator last NTH yeah actually we have such locator as NTH first locator first yeah but still playwright cannot find this one back to the list of articles oh it couldn't find another one waiting for 
get by text so it actually found this element yeah you see it clicked on this first one it clicked on this first one because we said like click on the first one actually let's remove this we don't need this anymore so and we when we didn't specify on which element we wanted to click so playwright just threw an error saying sorry 34 elements i don't know on which one to click resolved to 34 elements i don't know on which one to click playwright says so we can use here first it, i just clicked on first we can do the last let's test the last so this one boom let's run it and watch watch mode remember right uh, it will run the tests whenever i save them okay so this one clicked on the last one it found and now and if you remember from the previous lectures about css xpath selectors uh, in css we also have and and child last child something like that first child and here it's the same thing let's say and four yep we're running the test automatically because we turned on this watch mode and let's see whether that works okay it couldn't find the element yeah now it found it because it was we were changing this too frequently okay so it took the latest one fourth okay this is the fourth element we have so it starts counting from zero so this is zero one two three and four fourth element all right uh and what else do we have nth last what methods we also have here again okay, button only visible elements yeah that's where we were <laughs> so i was showing like you the strictness thing so whenever you see this strictness error when playwright finds multiple elements you can either do what i just did so you can specify exactly like i want to click on the first element which matches this selector or the last one or the nth one or if some button is invisible and some is visible then you can change chain the locators like this visible true so this is another option but for a, a different use case for this use case all right moving on to lists lists we already played with lists now so this is the list of articles let's select it here list of articles this is each element each link of the article and this is what playwright shows us here use the count assertion to ensure that the list has three items okay let's see how many items our list has i will select this list let's do it this way post list and i want to select last list last list and then yeah, i'll just copy this and then boom last to have count okay saving let's see to have count okay received one no 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 i want last and then i want locator i want to see how many articles i have locator a the links i prefer it this way yeah locator a to have count now okay prettier forces me to write it this way locator post list last so i found the last list of posts showing you so this spot this list not this one we have above right so this is the last and then locator a locator a should be 
all the links over here all the links over here and then i'm saying to have count three to have count three and it fails it says that received 30 expected three so it sees that there are 30 articles here but it was expecting only three okay let's change that 30 saving control save or command save watching the test run yep everything worked perfect so it found the first element here no actually like it found all the links here and uh, like evaluated that the count of the links is 30. okay following the documentation again assert all text in a list assert all text in a list yep that's also possible to have text and we can do this in our example to have text so yeah i'll do it i'll just copy this list item to have text <laughs> like this page locator okay list item last okay something's messed up with the okay here i have to add one more apple banana orange but i don't have apple banana orange i'll use the first here i have four articles i'll just copy this Okay, like this one, two, three, and four. Boom. Let's see. Ouch. <laughs> to have count can only be used with locator object. What? Oh, okay. Should clean this up. Will this one work? Received four. Ah, come on. Okay, it restarts the test because, like, I, I changed it mul changed it multiple times and then saved it multiple times, and each time I save it, it just reruns the test. Okay, array, blah blah blah. To have multiple job offers. Okay, so it says that received this, but I was giving it. Um, like an array of elements let's check the docs apple banana orange apple banana orange get by roll list item hmm. list item posts list to have text so it gets this it gets yes 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 it gets this and then so each element over here has this text to choose between multiple job offers hmm that's strange but but okay maybe i should yeah let me try this get the links first and then locator links let's see the test running okay this one worked yeah you see so i had to specify that link uh, i want to compare links so it gets all the links from this first articles section this one and compares them to this text that i provided to have text and these are the names of the articles okay that also worked get a specific item get specific item get by text orange yeah that's clear so it can get text by text uh, locator filter by text we already did that filter has text orange 
easy for us. Okay, data test ID, we also know how to do this, get by test ID, then get by nth item. I showed you this, right? First, last, and nth child. Okay, chaining filters. Chaining filters, yeah, we already did that too. Uh, we selected some element, then we did some filtering, then we selected some child element inside of it, we did more filtering, and here Playwright also shows a screenshot. So it saves screenshot, but that's not the topic of the current play, uh, lecture. Rare use cases. Uh, sometimes you might want to get all the elements like this, but yeah, most of the time you, you would want to check the text and to check the text, just do the following to have text for all elements and just pass array here to have text. Okay, uh, chaining filters, strictness. Okay, strictness, I already showed you strictness, right? If a playwright found finds more than one element on the page for the selected locator that you provided it, then playwright throws error. Playwright doesn't know on which button to click. You have to put some more specific locator for the exact button that you want to click on. All right. Okay, that's it for this document. It's huge and the most important one for working with the locators. Okay, that was a lot, I know. Uh, Playwright CSS XPath locators, we reviewed this already, okay, minus one, then field locators. Again, we already tried that, everything works perfectly. Locator operators, uh, these are or, or, and. These are the operators. Okay, done that. Lists, we worked with lists. So we located some specific elements in the list uh, by text, uh, using filters, uh, using this uh, last or first or nth methods. Then strictness. Okay, we already covered the strictness. Perfect. Yeah, so we basically covered everything. And yeah, now I want to summarize how we can select the locators. So the ways that I showed you previously uh, is just using Chrome elements, just inspect like this, just again reminding you, inspecting like this in HTML, and then here right-click, copy, CSS, or XPath. All right, then Crow path, selectors hub, these are extensions. Again, reminding you, one, two, three, crow path. This is, this is the extension that I have that has, uh, adds this green border, this green border. All right, so these are kind of old school, old school ways of uh, <laughs> locating the elements on the page. The new ways are using recorder. So what we did in previous video, just use the recorder and use whatever Playwright suggests you, uh, save your time, save your energy for more important things. Or pick locator, again, use an extension, just go pick locator using Playwright built-in tools, works perfectly most of the times. For other times you have uh, learned today a lot of uh, kind of features of <laughs> Playwright uh, to kind of build more specific locators. And anytime you can get back to CSS or XPath. So if you feel like play Playwright locators don't do a great job, then probably you're doing something wrong. And yeah, still it's fine using CSS or XPath selectors as I did today. Again, uh, trace viewer and UI mode is similar to like recorder and pick locator. These are just built-in tools into Playwright where you can hit uh, get, get me locator and this will work. And yeah, as always, play with some selectors. Make some errors like me, make some errors intentionally, make Playwright fail the tests on some locators. Try to use Playwright recorder, locator, 
try to go and play with locators inside of Chrome console, as I showed you before, you remember with that uh, dash dash debug mode. So you have playwright object and you can go like get by text from the Chrome DevTools and test something there if some uh, selector doesn't work for you. All right. Yeah, just play with locators. Uh, go to ChatGPT, ask ChatGPT, okay, here is HTML, generate some locator for me, please. Just, yeah, enjoy the process. I know this video is long because I really wanted not just go through the documentation and say, okay, guys, here is documentation and just re read it through with you. No, I wanted to show, okay, here is website, here are some elements, real elements. Let's try to locate some of them. And I suggest you to do the same. And if you have some website which you probably started um, automating or you're already working as manual QA engineer, then try to play with the website uh, that you are currently testing at your work. All right, Lo uh, for locators, that's it for today. It's already, yeah, took a lot of time to record this one. Next time we're gonna talk about actions. We'll do the actions with the elements. So now we were locating elements on the page and in the next video, we're gonna do some actions with these elements. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Again, I'm gonna show you what's under the hood. And as a bonus, we'll talk about triple A pattern. I will show you some real tests from the project that I worked on. Uh, where I use this AAA pattern. Okay, we'll talk about that in the next one. And again, reminding you, guys, repeat everything after me and learn JavaScript. Learn JavaScript just step by step, topic by topic, just learn it. You will struggle a lot if you just uh, use the recorder and you feel like, okay, I'm QA automation engineer because I know how to click on record test and here playwright generates all the tests for me. Okay, now, uh, now I'm, I'm profi. Now, you will struggle, you won't succeed if you don't know JavaScript. That's the reality. Okay, and I'm talking to you. To you, not you. Not you. I'm talking to you. If you watched the video until this moment and haven't subscribed. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support and see you in the next one. Bye.